Greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Welcome to day three and I'm so excited today. Now today's word, the topic which I'm going to talk about is about bringing God into your situation. Yes, you've heard very correctly, bring God into your situation. Now let's say a small prayer. Father God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the amazing opportunity you've given, Father. As I'm going to speak your word, you speak through me, Father. Every ear which is going to listen to it, let me blessed, be encouraged to be your child, Father. Lord. Speak through me for your glory, for your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, I'm so excited to talk about today's word as bring God into your situation. Now, I was into many issues, into many problems. But I always tried to fix the problem by myself. And trust me, my dear friends, I fail miserably. Not all, but majority. So some of the critical things, I fail really miserably. And then I said, God, why are you not taking care of me? God, why you are not listening to me? Why you are not answering to my prayers? I've been blaming God, saying that, God, you're not there when I need you. Trust me, this blame went for ages, from my school time, my college time, when I started working, and many other, and it still continued. Huh? And have you ever realized, I'm sure, at least once, even you must have said, God, why you are not looking at me? God, why you are not watching over me? God, why you are not answering me? When if you are there, you would have saved me from this trouble. I'm sure you must have prayed this. We all do. Because we have a great confidence in us that if God is there, nothing would go wrong. If God is there with us, nothing can go wrong. You and me, we all have that. But let me tell you, there's a catch to it. Knowingly or unknowingly, we handle things with our own wisdom and knowledge. I'm sure you remember you said, I know how to deal with this. I know. Sometimes we pass and sometimes we fail. I don't want to talk about anyone, but I want to talk about myself that I have failed miserably many a times. Because I used my wisdom and knowledge. Now, let about the Bible talks about is that the source of wisdom and knowledge is Jesus, not me. The source of wisdom and knowledge is Jesus, not me. But I believed my wisdom because there was a quote which I've read and my teachers taught me and everyone said, believe in yourself and you can make it. Let me tell you, no. You are limited. You are creation of God. You are not creator. Now, the people say, the word says, believe in yourself and you will make it. Did you create yourself? No, right? God is a creator. He created the heavens and earth. He created you. He created me. Why believe in ourselves when we can believe in him? And I realized this very late. Trust me. I realized a little late when I crossed my teenage. Now, I'm not trying to tell my age here. Okay, I'm young in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you are young in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right? The power in the name of God. Now, the today's topic, what I'm talking about is bringing God into your situation. So, I was just thinking why I failed so many times. It can be at workplace. It can be an issue. It can be a project. It can be a personal life. It can be a relationship. Because every time I took charge... I used my brains, my wisdom, my knowledge, my strength to deal with it. I felt that I am complete. But I realized very late that I am limited. 
I've been handling all my situations by myself. I repeated the saying, I failed miserably. A few days back, when I was turning Bible, I was going through some YouTube videos. I've heard some preachers talking about. So the couple of incidents in the Bible which really motivated me, which cleared the air, which cleared the confusion that where I am going wrong. And today, my dear friends, I'm here to share with you the lesson which I've learned very hard way to share it with you so that you can overcome quickly. You can improve your life quickly and you can build your life in the right way. Now, invite Jesus into a situation. I want to talk about it. The first example is in Genesis 16, 14. Now, the Hagar, you know Hagar, right? Hagar was sent out from the tribe. She was in wilderness with a kid. It was hot, scratching heat in the desert when she nailed down and looked at the child, was very thirsty, she's upset. And she cried out to the Lord, help me, help me. And the angel of the Lord appeared to her, gave a promise. An angel of the Lord appeared to her, spoke to her, give her confidence. The angel of the Lord was there to help her and provided the water. She was in the Desert, nothing is seen from far. I'm like, he, she cannot see anything. There's no one around to help. And she just cried out to the Lord that help me. And the God answered. God answered her when she was in a trouble. When she, was, when she saw her son was dying. When she and her son was thirsty. She did not try to dig a well there. She did not use the brains. She did not use her strength, but she cried, the Lord help me. And that is when angel of the Lord appeared. Genesis 18.1 Now everyone was blessed with kids. Abraham was always almost around 100 plus and Sarah was almost about to hit 99. Naturally, if you see at that age, humanly not possible, anyone getting pregnant and deliver a child. Trust me, not possible. Not at all possible. And even if I go and tell someone about it, you know, I try telling people about it. They say, really? I don't believe that. It's humanly not possible. The word, this phrase, it's humanly not possible. It means it's not possible for humans, but it's possible for God. When God spoke to Abraham and said, you will be blessed with a child. Sarah laughed. Abraham could not believe it. But somewhere deep in his heart, he knew that. If God has promised, he would definitely fulfill. And we worship the promising God. Right, and he fulfilled the promise, and Sarah blessed with beautiful child Isaac. And rest of the story, you know about it. The third thing we're talking about, Genesis 22 1 to 19. When God wanted to test Abraham's faith, he said, Take your son to the mount and sacrifice him. Abraham did not have an ounce of doubt. He just packed his backpack, get his donkey ready, took his son, took the knife, took his men who could support him, and he was on for the journey. I'm sure Isaac must be confused. What is going on here? What is my father up to? Imagine getting a child age of 100 after so long years and I'm sure that father would be so 
much in love with that child. But Abraham did not even doubt his faith. And he said, okay, God, you have given and I'm going to give it back to you. This is your child. And he raised the knife to sacrifice his child. And the Lord spoke. Hold on, Abraham. Now, there was a trouble. Understand a father's heart. Only child after 100 years. There must be an emotional fight inside. But he believed God. And God said, I believe and I trust you and your faith. You don't have to kill your child. There is a ram. Go and sacrifice. Now the question is, where did the ram came from? I'm sure when the God said, don't kill your child, uh, Abraham must have looked here and there, hey, I've got a ram here. Shall I go and sacrifice that? But no. Out of the blue, where did the ram came? It means God would also provide you, when he checks your faith, he will also provide you to finish the task what is assigned to you. You may not see the right opportunities. You may not see the right resources. You see everything is blank in front of you. You don't see anyone who can help you, who can understand or talk to you and provide a guidance. But all of a sudden, one phone call, all of a sudden, one message can bring a smile on your face. That's God who's going to provide that help. You getting it, my dear friends? I'm sure you're going to experience a great faith today. Now, Genesis 32, 30, also mentioned in Hosea 12, 4, when Jacob is in a deep problem, his brains were all shut. He was not able to understand what to do. He was not able to think how he's going to deal with this problem. He went and he wanted to spend some time with the God and see God's help. And that is when he saw a man, I'm like, who's not just like you and me, but someone who's like incredibly strong, amazing. He realized that this is something not normal. This must be a supernatural and must be someone whom God has sent. And he wrestled with that man, that unnamed man for a whole night. He got his thigh broken, but he did not give up. What happens, my dear friends, when we deal with situation, we get so frustrated. And I personally got so frustrated at work, in relationship, with friends. When my friends try to test my patience, when people try to test my patience, when things go wrong and I'm not able to understand, I get so frustrated. I've thrown phones many times. I've kicked the things very hard. I get so frustrated. That is when the devil feeds on you and starts taking charge on your life. Jacob was wrestling. Whole night did not give up. And that is when the God answered him that you will no more be called Jacob, but you would be in Israel. One, you never gave up. So my dear friends, if you're going through a trouble, situation, do not give up because God is watching over you and do not give up till the end because after the end, there is a promise for you. You never know, like Jacob turned into Israel, you never know, maybe you turn the face of the world. You become the God's most favorite child. Possible? Definitely. But well, it all depends upon you, how you believe it. When we come across sin today, it's so easy to fall in sin. You don't have to work to fall in sin. The technology would help you to fall in sin. The minute you think of something, you just have to browse something and the internet would take care of it. It will send messages, it will send pop-ups, it will send videos, it will give option for the click on many browsers. It will help you to fall in sin, my dear friends. 
the minute we fall in sin we get that a sinful thought we die immediately because we disconnect ourselves from God but my dear brothers and sisters my dear friends and families I want to tell you don't give it up just take a step back and say God you're in control God you're in control look at David whenever he was out he was always speaking to God that you're there with me God you're in control you're gonna start speaking get in a habit and you're gonna make this as a muscle memory that every time you breathe you get the five seconds free time say God you're in control God you're in control keep saying that keep saying that keep saying that because he is a source of energy source of wisdom knowledge strength endurance the God is the one who created the heavens and earth and he created you and every time you take his name your body becomes habituated to listen to his name and the more you listen is more you believe like it said that you know if you hear if you listen to the word of God continuously you start believing in it so once you start saying your name regularly once you start calling God regularly when he calls his name regularly you would get habituated to call his name regularly you will hear regularly and you start believing regularly in every situation and every problem and everywhere where you go you say God you're in control you get out from the car God you're in control you're going for an interview God you're in control you're working in a meeting God you're in control you're in a new project God in a control you have a problem the God is in control you have a court case God in the control God is going to speak through you God is going to open the doors for you you're going to start saying that God is in control every time you breathe you say God is in control and it becomes your muscle memory and it's gonna come automatically it become your habit it becomes your habit that was the secret of David that everything what he does every plan God is in control God you're there Do you understand it, my dear friends invite God into your situations and that's how the God would bring miracles now one more thing which you want to talk about is Exodus 3 2 that Moses was a murderer he murdered an Egyptian and he ran away from that place. All right? He ran away from that place and later the God chose them. God chose them and then when the Moses goes to the mount, he climbed the mountain and he see a burning bush. I'm sure he must have never seen a burning bush but is not getting burnt. Imagine if this scene is in front of you, what will you do, my dear friend? If someone asked me, I would definitely get horrified. I would be scared. What is this? I've never seen something like that. You know, this burning bush and the bush is not burning. I'm sure Moses must have got scared. But then the God gave him encouragement. God spoke to him. He flee away from everyone. He was just living his private life with his family. That's it. He was disconnected from everyone. And that is when the God appeared and spoke to him that I am the great I am. Today, Moses is one of the most popular figure or character in this world. And how did he become great? Did he use his own wisdom, his strength, his knowledge? No, the God said, I am the great I am, recognize me. I am the great I am. And because of his strength, because of his blessing, because of his divine protection, Abraham was able to do miracles and face the enemy and bring out his people safely. God showed up their misery when Moses was going through frustration Moses was going through the confusion he was guilty for killing someone but God showed up and used him I'm sure my dear friends you may be guilty of something what you've done when you sleep you just feel very heavy you feel that, oh God, why not have done this? Don't worry. Because that's not your job. You're going to do your job. And your job is to call God. Your job is to cry to the Lord because He's the Creator. He's the one who can cleanse and He's the one who can give you peace. The sixth point I want to talk about when Moses 
to call Israelites and he was walking in that desert. God was there with him. Imagine you just walking all alone and you see a huge desert. There's no one around and you, you and your family is just walking in the night and day. I don't think so. We will be ever dare to do that. The people walking in the desert, they were just walking and walking and walking. And the reason why they were able to walk, and that's not an easy thing. That's a situation there. They were all happy, or at, not happy, but at least in Egypt, they were getting a food to eat. They have a place to live. They have water to drink. They have people to chit chat. They had some kind of entertainment or whatever is that. But here, nothing was there. They were just walking and walking and walking and walking and walking. This is God's protection. There was fire of pillar in the night to give them light and the cloud in the day. God provided manna, a heavenly food for them. When Moses strike the rock, there's a pure water. It means when you are in misery, when you feel that you're all alone and you think that all the doors have shut, you feel that there's no one in this world can help you, can understand you, can ever listen to you. And that's the time you call God. He would answer you because he's a prayer answering God. Like I like the way the God says, I am the great I am. I hear a lot of people, I'm there for you. I'm here to help you. There's no bigger I am than God. There's no bigger God than Jesus. He said, I am the great I am. Now what happens? There's a verse from Judges 13.22. The angel of the Lord appeared to a barren woman, an Israelite woman. And said, soon you'll become pregnant and you'll give birth to a son. And he will rescue Israel from Philistine. Both husband and wife got shocked, horrified. What is he saying? They started asking God that how to raise this special child. How to raise this special child. And the God appeared to them twice. And they God asked them to provide sacrifice. And when they provided the sacrifice, they were consumed by the fire. They both fell right on the face on the ground and they got shock. But God said, don't fear. Is there not to scare, but to bless them. And you know the Samson story, right? In John 3, 17, it says, God did not come to kill, but give us life. He's the one who breathed the air, the life into our nostrils, into our life, my dear friends. The next point we're going to talk about, which is Isaiah 6, 1 to 10. When prophet Isaiah was sitting on heavenly throne, he got a vision. He got a vision that God is sitting on a big throne and there's angels playing, singing and dancing and even he is there. What a great vision. When you become the child of God, when you start believing 100%, not 99.99999, complete 100% and that is when the God would give you visions. That is when God would show you purpose and you ready to put on that armor and he would send you to share the prophecies. He will bring the meaning of the dreams. He will make you an important man in the world. But the kings and the rulers would also reach up to you for wisdom and knowledge. Now talking more about it, one of the most iconic event which happened in the Old Testament was Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, where they were in a deep trouble. 
when Nebuchadnezzar said, you have to bow down and worship my Lord. And they refuse to do that and say, I believe, we believe our Lord, who's a living Lord, who's a prayer answering Lord. And that is when they were thrown into a furnace of fire. And the king was amazed to see I threw three people. How come there is four? Now, this particular example, this particular story motivated me so much. When people put me into trouble, when people try to push me into trouble, they think that they're going to put me into trouble, they're going to harm me. <clears throat> but now I got a formula to deal with this, is to call God into the situation. Call God into the problem. When they called and cried to the Lord, and the Lord was there in such a hot furnace, the burning furnace, even a single hair did not get damaged. The clothes were not burned. They were not even smell. Look at how great is God. So what I've learned from these stories is that God would do miracles in the situation and that miracle would be a blessing and a great blessing for you and for others it's going to be a great testimony for you now you are in a situation so your job is to not deal with the situation but call God into the situation when God comes into the situation he will help you to overcome that situation there is a process where he will take you through to refine you to bring out of the process and that process would motivate you and that process would encourage many people and that process would tell that God is there in the situation and he pulled you out of the situation and that is when the history is created and that is when the God makes you very special everyone would fall into a situation but not everyone comes out of it because people do not know the key how to deal with it. and I got to know now I got to know the key now and I'm sharing this key with you as well you are in a deep problem you are in a situation at a workplace or a relationship or an issue or a problem call God into your situation all your job is to surrender into him submit yourself the lord you take charge i know you've been made in god's image but you're not god but you are a son and daughter of god what a son and daughter would do if they're in trouble they call the father so what are we doing why we need to take things in our own hands call a father when father comes the kids would have a strength and the father comes there would be happiness when the father comes there would be joy this is what the God want you to do this is what the God want you and me to do believe in him call him in the situation and I'm sure you know what we are worshiping we're praying to a living God He's a God of Abraham Isaac Jacob David and the same God is your God and my God right is a prayer answering God he made you unique he made you different he made in his image and he knows you before you are carved in your mother's womb you're that special know your worth my dear friends Call God, cry out loud to come into the situation. And when you're calling in Him, just don't call. Just believe that He's there with you. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They believe that God is there with Him, with them. They believe that God is there with them always. When David was, when David went to kill Goliath. And Goliath was shouting and he said, come on, if you dare to come and fight. And he's a small kid. But he said, 
I know my Lord is there. His faith brought God there. God gave him wisdom to pick up the one stone on which the story of Goliath's life was written. He picked up the stone and he shot him right on his forehead. Goliath fell down and David used his sword to cut his neck and that made a history. It's not about David and Goliath. It's about God being there in the situation when devil is so big, when devil is so gigantic, when the devil displays that there's a huge, he is so big and you're so small. No problem. Let him feel big. Let him feel great. Let him feel powerful. You're small. No problem. Your God is bigger than him. Your God is a creator. You, all you do is that. Thank you, Lord. Come and help me. And that is what going to make a difference. That is how you can live a life of champion. That is where you can showcase to the world that your God is a prayer answering God. And that is where the God would use you as a soul winner. That is where the God is going to use you as your child, his child. God is going to make a history. God is going to write a story which would be there in the history because you choose to call him into your story. And that is when the God would make history for you. My dear friends, let's say a small prayer. Father God, thank you, Jesus. We are made in your image, mighty Lord. But Father, you're the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You are the one who created the heavens and our Father. Today, we welcome you into our hearts. Be the King of our heart. And Father, every day when we start a work, when we sleep, when you go and work on a project, work at, at, at office, work at shop, at the business, and any disputes or a court case or, or sickness, Father, you come into the situation and handle it, mighty Lord. We surrender ourselves 100%. We submit ourselves 100%, Father Lord. We raise our hands and submit that you take a charge. We're not going to do that, Father. We are your sons and daughters. We're going to sit and enjoy the life with you, Father Lord. You come and take the charge, mighty Lord. Today, my friends are suffering. My friends have a problem with the jobs. My friends are suffering with ill health. My friends are suffering with... Uh, debts. My friends are suffering with the family issues, Father. But I know, Father, you're going to come into our situation today and take charge of the situation. Satan, we got the key. A God is a provider. And I tell you, you've already been defeated. Leave us. Go away from us because it's at Jesus' time right now. It's a God's time right now. He is the great I am who's eternal, who's omnipotent and who's yesterday, today, and forever. My Lord, my people, bless them, Father Lord. My Lord, bless my friends, my colleagues, my family members, my neighbors, specifically bless the leaders, Father Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The people are suffering with Corona. No more sudden deaths, Father Lord. Bless the doctors. Bless the soldiers, the army people, the police people, Father Lord. Enough, of enough, Father. Now, wipe out corona from this world father let the air be filled with jesus blessing your aroma father lord you come into a situations mighty lord in jesus name i pray and i call upon and declare and victory the blessing for my people blessing for my friends blessing for my colleagues blessing for my students blessing for my relatives and blessing for the nations in jesus name i pray amen Thank you very much, friend. Thank you so much for listening to me. I'm sure God is going to use you, make you a soul winner. Just call him. He's a prayer answering God. And you have a great day ahead. Stay blessed. We have two more chapters, which I'm going to share very soon. Stay tuned for more. Keep praying and keep inviting God. Stay connected. You remember the mantra. God, you're in control. God, you're in control. God, you're in control. Let that become your muscle memory. God bless you. Cheers.